My dog is bothering me, but I'm going to do my best. So I made a new project here. You should do so as well. I'm using Unity 2022 and Blender 4.0. So here's a project with nothing. And we're going to import our uh, import package, custom package, this. It's big now. I'm sorry. It's because of the image files. Ferality is coming up. So just bring everything in. Now my dog is... What? Yeah. It's working. It's working. Hmm. Huh. Whatever. Ignore any errors that you get. Just... Just ignore them. There's going to be a bunch of stuff. Just ignore it. Okay. So now that you've uh, installed the package, get on in here into blend files, FBX files, and prefabs and find the step one blend file. Here it is. Should be generic. Don't change it. So I'm double clicking on it and it's opening Blender 4.0 for me. This is what you see. Okay. So if you have no idea what you're doing, just follow along with me. Click once on the pink Anytar. So it now has a light orange outline. Delete. You've deleted that mesh. Oh, you can see in the corner here what I'm doing. Good, that's working. Okay, we are now going to import an FBX. This should be your four-legged critter FBX. I have one on the desktop that I'll be using. Just import it however it is. Step one, see if you can't, well, okay, step one, go to the little green running man down here and viewport display do in front. And that's the armature setting. So now you can see what you're doing. Okay, so the step one that we're gonna do is we want, this is like the base of your head where your neck goes into your head. We wanna make the height of these two things match on these avatars. Every ugh. And so when I scaled this, it got big in all directions. We don't want that. We want it to scale from the origin under its toe. So I'm going to hit the period button and go to scale. And so this is where things are going to move and scale from. I'm going to go to 3D cursor. And now when I scale it, it scales like how I want. Um, it's, it's probably good to have yourself hovering a little. This is a little more hovering than I'm used to having. So I'm going to click once on the skeleton, hold down shift, click again on the mesh, which is pink wolf. And then I'm going to hit G for grab. And then you can do X, Y, or Z for which axis you're grabbing on so that you can move your mouse wherever. And it's just kind of a little more controlled. So I'm going to, so that was G and then Z to move it down a little bit. So I'm going to make it be about this for, you want a little clearance off the ground. Okay. So then I'm going to do click anywhere. I'm for me, it's F3 search. I'm going to search the word origin. Now I'm going to say origin to 3d cursor. Oops. I have to have it selected first. F3 origin to 3d cursor there. You, you maybe didn't see it, but when we moved it down, it's origin, which is a special secret thing moved with it. And I'm just putting it back to the 3d cursor, which is currently in the middle of the world. That's that kind of red and white dotted line, whatever. When I come up here and click these things to just get the side view, I do that a lot. Okay. So as I said, we're trying to get this and this to match up. I have the armature and the guy selected. I'm hitting grab. I'm hitting Y and I'm just moving it back so I can see them both at once. And now I'm scaling. It looks like this is like kind of right below this light gray line. Just guess for this, but get kind of close. That's as close as you need to get. Now I'm going to move them forward until I'm pretty sure they match up. Oh, I have to guess for this because I don't know what I'm doing. Whatever. There. That looks close enough. So this is pretty much where I want it. Now, if you really don't know what you're doing, just 
match these viewpoints and you'll be fine. If you do know what you're doing, pose your, you want your mesh posed so that your feet are as beneath your head as possible because that will feel the best in full body VR that you'll look down and the pause will be where your feet actually are. It's fine if you can't get it perfect that way. But um, so if you don't know what you're doing, this is enough. You just want those uh, head bone pivots to match up. Now go to object, transform, no. Object, apply, all transforms to make that stick, ideally. All right, so that looks good. Uh, now, if your mesh did not come with its own skeleton, that's fine. This one did, that just gives us a hint about, let's see, does this have weight painting? So if you click once on whatever your mesh looks like, and you go here to this kind of green upside down triangle, I can see that this has, you, you would wanna expand vertex groups. So this has weight painting already, allegedly, let's see. If I go to weight paint mode, yes, it does. Oh, well, that's nice. I thought it didn't. Okay, cool. So this has some weight painting already. So, um, and if you have like a video game rip or something, it absolutely will. So we, I'll show you how to reuse weight painting. But for now, once you're opposed, once you've been scooted and scaled into the correct place, go back to the step one armature, click on it once so it's light golden, and then go to edit mode. And so what you are going to be doing is you're taking this step one skeleton and you are gonna be fitting it to your mesh, except it also needs to be in front so you can see what you're doing. Okay, so your hind hips are the same rotation. Oh God, hitting period and then I'm hitting median point. Okay, so there. So your hind hips are the same, like this is the rotation of them. They are actually the same as the humanoid hips in the step two armature. You used to get tremendous horrible problems from like this rotation being off. I don't think you do anymore, but just for luck, just translate this instead of rotating. So translating something is moving it around in X and Y and rotating is going like this. So consider just translating this bone that's sticking straight up instead of rotating it. But oh, uh, also, if you press W, you cycle through different selection modes. So like this draws a box. If I keep, this is just like a circle, I guess. I like the lasso select. So just keep pressing W until you get lasso. Select, drag around the whole ass end of the avatar and take this kind of hip central thingy and put it in about the right place. Please do not zoom in. Whoa. Don't. Okay, so if I hold down shift and I do middle click, I can kind of paddle around the screen like this. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so please do not get super anal and like, Go in, go try to make it. You don't need to do that. You seriously don't need to do that. Just get it like close enough. Seriously, just get it close enough. All right. And so what we're going to be doing is just going through and putting our knee, we're matching up these joints to if, so if your model came rigged, this is what you're doing. You're going to match up to the existing rigs proportions as best you can with the hind hips going back wherever the hind hips are. And uh, yeah. I'm just going through. If you wanna add more tailbones, now you'll have to weight paint them. So if you're matching an existing rig, add more tailbones so that you have as many as the rig has. Um, actually, no, don't do that. Just fit the existing bones that are here. Um, if the rig already has extra bones, like the rig has more tail bones, we're actually going to like pull them out of that rig and stick them onto this one um, before our last step. Anyway, if you don't have wings, this model does not have wings. Oh, I'm holding down shift and clicking on them and that selects one after the other. Holding down shift adds them to my selection. If you don't have wings, delete the wings. If you do not have apparent arms, so this model does have arms. It has these vines, but um, more or less, it's like a quad wolf, right? You know, you know. So if you're a quad wolf and you don't have arms, feel free. Oh, and to rotate the screen, I'm holding down middle mouse button. If you're a quad and you don't have arms, feel free to delete them. The reason if I delete one, deletes the other ones is because I have symmetry toggled. You definitely, 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 and I hit Control Z there. You want to be working with symmetry, so make sure this stays toggled. 
All right, so I'm gonna go through and put all these joints where they go. Uh, the only kind of weird thing, one of the many weird things on this rig is how the torso works here, but I'm just gonna pretend like it's not strange. So this, this is the weirdest joint you have in this rig. This is your hips again. Don't worry about why it's called hips again, spine again, chest again. Just don't worry about that for now. But the joint between hot, your hips again and your hind chest, they kind of share pivot points. This is, this is a weird thing, but these have to be, in, have to be in the same place or you'll have problems later. So, but you're just rigging this like quote unquote normally. So if you were a tower, like a centaur, whatever, tar, tor, whatever, you would be rigging this as your humanoid upper body. But since you're a quad, your hips, spine, chest, and neck are all part of your quad neck. Um, so this is your hind chest going that way, and this is starting to be your neck. So just kind of a lot of neck bones for most creatures, but that's just the way it is. Oh, I'm, I don't know if it would cause any problems to have your head pointing a different way, but I just kind of roll with the head straight up. If you use my existing ears as a control bone, you will inherit some ear behavior, but by all means, you can delete the eyes if you don't want them. That kind of thing. What's that jaw? What's that doing? You don't need that. All right, so this is starting to look like a wolf. You definitely need a shoulder. If you don't, if your model doesn't seem to have a shoulder, or if you have no opinion about how your shoulder should be angled, leave it the way it is. This is kind of like a 45 degree angle question mark, I guess. I mean, I think uh, that's a good, you, you need, you need that angle or it's rough equivalent or you will have problems later. Not terrible problems, but obnoxious ones. So Later on in the project, when this bone rotates, I'll show you in pose mode. So when this bone rotates, not only does the leg swing forward, it's also lifted up. Wow, you can't see this at all in Unity. Never mind, I'll show you in Blender. I mean, sorry, you can't see it in Blender, I'll show you in Unity. You need this to be kind of like this, because if it were straight this way, it would just swing your leg forward and back. And if it were straight horizontal, it would just raise your leg up and down. You kind of want it at a nice, moderate amount. Kind of physiologically inspired. All right, this looks like a wolf to me. One thing of note, um, the way I handled this kind of camouflaged something about this model, but you've got some stuff going on here. So when I click on bones that are like on top of each other, like, so I can't really see which one I have selected because there's another one in front. Up here in the top left, it says that I have hind spine selected. So if I start kind of clicking over and over, it will kind of cycle through all the stuff that's piled all in a pile here. So there's this bone in here called bend. The only important thing you need, so if I hold down control and then I select something that deselects it. Um, you can select a bone by one end or the other end and that's just helpful for how you move it. So I'm deselecting this end of bend and I'm just grabbing it by the point. This bone is the wiggle of your front, the front half of your torso, and your hind hips back here are the wiggle of the back half of your torso. You should take, at the end of this bone, when you export your FBX, you're going to export with leaf bones. You have to export with leaf bones or you'll have problems. I thought that was funny and I have not gotten around to changing it. So make sure you export with leaf bones because the leaf bone that shows up at the end of this bone on export is used for stuff in the project. I'm sorry, but it is. So take this and put it back at your hind hips, kind of just the same as hind spine. For almost everyone, that is the correct placement for the bend end leaf bone that is used for other things later. Uh, now, if we take this model and look at it from the front, your considerations here are you want, I'm calling these your leg chains. So like this would be one chain and this is another chain. They're a chain of bones that are serving as your legs. Your leg chains should be quote unquote straight up and down. Now, if you were like kind of working more normally, another reason I'm like circling these is a lot of times with FB, oh, well, these are fine. Sometimes with FBXs, they can like come unstuck with each other. So if you were rigging this kind of more naturalistically, like you want to really get these in the 
inside the volumes of the mesh. I don't know, like you, well, those look straight up and down again, but I don't know if you weren't, if you, you know, like maybe these would certainly be out more and then this would be, you know, this would be kind of here. And then I don't know if, if these aren't, especially the shoulders. So if you were trying to rig this more like for regular animation stuff and your, your video game rip or whatever came like this, it will work. It will work if you just rig it like this. Don't, don't though. You will have problems. Uh, so as you're kind of last step handling these leg bones, when you have them matched from the side, select all the ones on one side with symmetry on, hit S to scale them a little. It doesn't matter what you have as your initial value. You want to scale them to zero and X and then return these Y and Z to one. And what happens when you scale to zero and X, which is side to side, is that they are now stacked perfectly on top of each other from orthographic front view. That is what you want. Um, if you do not do this, if you leave them out at funny angles, it will be almost impossible for you to deal with the custom poses later, like updating the custom poses, using the custom poses, re-recording them. It will really suck because you won't be able to use mine as a base and there will just, the pose clone, it just, just don't. Make sure these are all stacked on top of each other. Uh, you also want these about as far apart as your humanoid feet are going to be. Now, you can't see any humanoid feet here because your humanoid is separated into the step two armature. So after you get that step two armature and like come back and kind of, cause it's very easy, you know, grab them and just hit X and just kind of move them in, move them out. Don't get them flopped side to side. God, don't do that. Um, but so just remember that about the closest in though, like, so if you can't, if you put them exactly humanoid distance apart and they're entirely outside of your feet, as these are, um, a, a good compromise is to move them so that uh, they're in your inside most, your innermost toe. That makes it still feel like your foot and full body. And that that's fine. They don't have to match. Like, for instance, if your front legs are wider apart than your back legs, you can have the back legs be different. That's fine. It's mostly really, really important for your, for your front feet. But it's kind of important for all of your feet because the reason you want this to be accurate to your foot width is the further off. The, the wider it is versus you, the more you're going to get inappropriate amounts of roll when your hips roll. I don't know if you'll roll like a boat unless you get accurate foot width. Okay, so this looks pretty good. This is all we needed to do for this quad. So like that, hopefully so far it hasn't been difficult. So let's then, uh, okay, so then for this armature, it looks like it has a jawbone and I deleted our jawbone. So this is what you want to do if you have um, bones that you want to keep from the pre-existing rig, like extra tail bones, extra toe bones, rough bones, just weird tongue stuff going on. Click on your original armature until it's a light orange. Oops. And then go into edit mode. And then here I'm going to pretend like, so uh, here's something you, you definitely want to keep like the eyes probably. So I'm circling the eyes and the jaw and the ear too. Why not? Okay. So I have all these bones selected. Right click. Uh, Yes, separate bones. And that's generating a little extra armature here. So now we can, this original armature that the thing came with, I'm going to hit delete on because we don't need it anymore. Those bones that were separated out, when I have them selected light orange, I'm going to hold down shift and I click on our uh, step one armature. And then I'm going to do control J and that just joins them in. Now I'm going to, with that armature selected light orange, I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to select kind of the base, not these ones on the end, even though these are just leaf bones, um, select like the, the base inside most bones, um, keep holding down shift, hit head children, go here. And then I'm going to go right click parent, make, keep offset. So now all of those little child bones, and it's, it was symmetrical. So even though I only had one ear selected, the other one also had this parenting relationship applied. So any, anything you want on head children goes here. If you need it to wiggle, big wiggly ears, there will be some complicated steps later. Consider coming into the virtual limbs discord, get somebody to help you with it. It's kind of, it's kind of stupid, but it can be done. Um, but for now, if you're working from scratch, maybe don't have infinite wiggly things on your head because they take a little bit of extra doing. Anyway, so here we are. 
uh, now we need to make sure that this armature and this mesh are connected. So if we go to the wrench, um, because I deleted the original armature, it's not here anymore, but the mo armature modifier is. So we'll hit what object is it going to use? I'll tell it to use the regular armature. Click on that. Pose mode. Is it moving with? It's moving with. All right, so this model came with weight painting. I don't have to do it again. However, if I wanted to do it again, because this armature has been separated out, you can run the automatic weight paint if you want. And it looks like maybe maybe we'd get uh, better results if we did that, but we don't have to. All I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this torso because most, you know, my rig is very strange. Let's be real, it's very strange. So most models are not going to come with any kind of weight paint that works reasonably with my rig. So take bend, lift it up a little bit. So rotate it whichever way. And this always rotates opposite of bend. So if you're taking bend kind of clockwise, then this is going to be counterclockwise a little bit. I'm going to go to object mode, weight paint, and we are going to fix the hind torso groups. So you don't want to have any weight paint in hind spine. It looks like this one does not have hind spine weight paint. Great. I'm fast at reading. Uh, so because of how this one is, I could just, oh, so I'm in weight paint mode. I don't see anything. I kind of weight paint in a weird way. So I hit this vertex selection masking, even though I don't need to, because I want to see my dots. You could just sit here and blur for a million years. Don't do that. Depending on what you see here, um, I'm trying to think. Let's, so if, let me show you something. So, vertex. If you have a pre existing rig that came with an excellent weight paint, you're going to need to choose which of the pre existing groups because it'll probably have like a bunch of different ones in the hind torso. You're going to, you're going to need to choose which ones squ switch, get squished together. So this is the group you're adding stuff to. Vertex group A is the one you're adding stuff to. So like you'd go to vertex group A and set it to, oh, for goodness sake, come on. No. Blender. It's being weird. Set it to bend. So if you wanted to add some pre-existing weight paint groups to bend, you put bend first, and then you put the thing you're going to add, right? So you're going to take all everything that's in hind chest, and you're going to, in this instance, we're not going to do this, but theoretically, and add it to bend. You want to change this to all, and you want your mix mode to be like, I don't know, add. And then this would add them both together. You would, in theory, you would then apply this, and it would go away. And then you'd go in here and... um the old original ones you could delete or leave whatever floats your boat. And um, you would be choosing which ones would go into bend and which ones would go into hind chest. We're not doing that. Um, but that that is what you would do with some random model that you found. So instead, we're going to go to the gradient tool here on weight paint. We're going to set the strength to, I don't know, like half the weight to zero just because of how this looks radial. So we no strength to one. So we want, so we, we do want some of this coming all the way back to the hips. I just took that away to make it blurrier. Zoom out and we blur it, we blur it, we blur it. That's fine. Uh, now we're going to find hind hips. I swear there's hind hip weight painting. I don't see it though. Hmm. There is now. You can just add vertex groups. If you ran the automatic weight paint, you would see a little bit of everything in here. Two. You want, and I've got symmetry on. No. Okay. Make sure your symmetry is on symmetry. So you kind of, you want this coming really far up. What? I don't get symmetry. Apology, Mary. Come on. Okay. You really want this coming quite a ways up. Wait, strength. So this is hind hips. 
and you just you're gonna try to make this you know good just kind of make that's fine whatever make it good instead of bad so that's a nice there and you want it nice and blurred blur, 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 blur. now you have your tube wolf there that looks decent okay Um, so control Z is undo and control shift shift Z is redo. Bend. Blur. 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 Did we get fine chest? Yeah, and so um so hind hips and bend together are the only two things that control your entire torso. Um hind chest is for if you imagine if this avatar sat down. Hind chest is the stuff that is not participating in the sit. So I'm just going to blur a little bit. So this, I mean, this is fine. Boop, boop. And that's your torso. Toes mode. I'm hitting A to grab them all. Clear transform all. So the sit test. Whoop. That is not sit. That is bend. Okay. If you grab hind spine, not bend, and you swing hind spine down, you'll notice this avatar like can't quote unquote sit its butt doesn't reach the ground that's fine we'll deal with it later uh it will just make some stuff a little difficult for you or a little weird um the only thing that will affect is the dynamic sit feature where i use fizz bones to drag your butt around behind you um you would have to like toggle that mode on and then play space move down for your butt to hit the floor or crouch or get low in real life look i don't know anime proportions are difficult um so this is also another pose you want to make sure your avatar can do with the weight painting. So like this butt looks a little bit scrungled. Also, I know these are weird. This says like thigh, shin, thigh, foot. Don't rename these. What are you doing? No, you don't disrupt the hierarchy. Do not rename anything. Do not reparent anything. You can add stuff without disrupting the hierarchy, but don't, don't get confused by these. These are relics of when I had to add all the constraints by hand and I would forget what their sources are supposed to be, but just, just deal with it. Leave, leave those alone. The, the script will do all of the stuff for you. So you don't need these to make sense to you. You, you don't. This, yeah, this, they just need to make sense to the script later. All right, that looks, I don't know, that's fine. Magic of blur. It's fine. Okay. Close, clear, transform, all. The other test that you'd probably better pass, that's actually quite good. Um, make sure you can at least sort of do this. Believe me, you're going to need to do weird poses. You know, these these avatars that's going to do this. If your human does this, the avatar is going to do this. This is the sploot test. Can you do this? This actually isn't all that far off. Especially the hind legs are quite good. Uh, this is, you know, fine. Whatever. Keep working on this until the avatar is robu as robust as possible to poses like this. Just in case, okay? This is actually fine. That's pretty good. Um, also, it might do something like this. Well, probably not that. The, your, your legs are not going to extend any longer than this. So that's why your kind of default pose here should be standing neutrally. So like the front is good. The back legs are a little bit like uh, on this avatar just because of its uh, cartoonish stylization. This is like, kind of like crouched up you know compared to the front like this is not a very straight back leg like this is very straight so it's not the end of the world but uh your leg will never extend any further than this because of the nature of the rig so bear that in mind that you if you're working from scratch you would want your neutral standing pose to be like a true neutral standing pose like this more than you would want like an exaggerated crouch like this in the back but i mean it's fine it literally anything will work. It will just work better or worse based on the changes that you make here. So this is fine. I'm going to decide that this is fine. Oops. Boop, boop, boop. 
Uh, this avatar was intended for the the vines to be weight painted to the arms, but I'm actually not up to that. Or am I? No, I'm not up to that. I'll return it to the person and they can do that. Okay, so when your weight paint is good, you're going to append. Go to object mode. File. Append. And you're going to append the step two blend file. Um, and you think, oh, hit the button, and then you see more folders. Go to objects and hit armature, because that's all you need. If you hit something else, you might have my mesh come with, and that's fine. That's just my friendly little biped. Okay, so if you followed my instructions and you did not scale the step one armature to begin with, like you didn't touch it, you just scaled the other thing to match it, and then did your work, you'll be good here, and you'll be able to reuse my project avatar definitely, well, almost good. But the real one that you really don't want to mess with is you don't want to mess with this guy. The step two that you just imported, you do not mess with this thing. If you mess with this, you will have to re-import your resultant FBX and as humanoid, and you will have to make your own avatar definition. You'll have to drag everything into the horrible, stupid boxes all over again. So don't touch this guy. Touch this guy and make it match. So like, this, I don't know, this is a little bit off for whatever reason. If I grab the whole thing and move it, how much wiggle room do I have? That's fine, because I had enough foot floating space. I'm just gonna make these match. These are, this is what has to match. Not perfectly, but close enough. So take these, because I moved them, trans or apply, all transforms. Okay, so now take this guy, click on that. Hold down shift, click on this one, and do okay. So they're like they're like a <clears throat> they're like a little off from each other. Oh, is that because I don't know? Who cares? It's close enough. You would ideally want them to be like the same. <laughs> but this is close enough. It's fine. So control J. They are now joined together. <laughs> Whoa. They're now joined together. And you need to reparent. Click here. Hold down control and click there. Control P. No. <laughs> Edit mode first. Okay, so edit mode, you want to select your hind chest, and then you want to select over here, because otherwise you're going to be like having problems with hips versus hips again. So hind chest first, and then hold down control, click hips again. No. What? Hind chest. Where'd they go? Hind chest, control, click hips. Control P, make parent, keep offset. I'm pretty sure. Okay, then what? Is that it? That might be it. I think that's it. Okay, uh, file, export, FBX. You have to change apply scalings to FBX all. For luck, uncheck baked animation. This, I'm just going to put it on my desktop. Um. Export FBX. So now it's on my desktop. Okay, so that should be it. We are now going to close Blender. We are back in our project. Assets. No, yes, no. Import new asset desktop. The FBX file we just made. Here it is. I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag it here. Uh, if I double click on it, if it, if I drag it here, it shows up at zero, zero, zero. You're going to run into problems if you're working with an Anytar and it's like over here. You'll have problems. So like, no. Um, when you drag it in to begin with, drag it in over here and, you know, the position should be zero, zero, zero. Go to Anytar script folder. Click and drag on this. Pop that there. 
and start following the instructions. Um, I have not yet updated this. Like I said, you can delete the wings if you don't use them. You can delete the humanoid apparent humanoid arms from the step one blend file. You can delete things, those things from the step one blend file if you need to. But this is accurate that you definitely need a bend end. But it also tells you how to add one manually if uh, you just can't stand leaf bones. So click these buttons in order. Don't do this. Maybe I'll cover that in another video. It's stupid. Okay, so because I clicked these buttons in order, it's an ATAR now. And we're moving into leg chain calibration. And I have other videos on this. Um, if you click here, you switch between um, flat and 3D. So this is just like, you know, follow the buttons in the script. If you get here, you're far enough well, I, where I will have some interest in helping you, like, personally, if you need it. But the instructions should be pretty straightforward. So the, also the deal with the script if you screw up, and you probably will, the point is that this makes it fast enough that you can just be like, ah, I fucked it up, and then you just delete it and start again. You know? Just start again. Wait, that's not right. Don't do that. Hold on. Uh, that was the blend file. Don't, you, you can, in your own project, do stuff directly with the dot blend file instead of a dot FBX, but don't get in that habit because other people... If they try to use your work, sometimes the blend file like, won't work for them. It's only going to work on your computer. So this wound up getting imported into assets. So here it is. So anyway, so if you messed it up, just take another one, any tar, any tar script, and just start over. You know, just start over. This just did like hundreds of things for you that you don't have to deal with. So just start over. Uh, anyway, I'll calibrate this really quickly just so that we can get it going. One thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch some of these all to kind of a, a middling relaxed 0.5 and then tighten them up. So the chair pose is like if a human sat down on a park bench with their thigh out horizontal and their shins hanging down vertically, kind of a 90 degree angle there. So I'm going to do the animal version of that. So Shoulders don't turn down any more than like 0.3 or you'll have problems, but shoulders can be turned down to deal with a uh, floor clipping if you need to. Upper arms. Let's... Oh, and the dotted line represents where your humanoid foot more or less kind of is, and you want your paws resting on the dotted line more or less. But you can also just do what you want. Uh, if Generally, I try to have the front paws be... Uh, a different value, a smaller value than the front beans. This is your foot. This is your toe, but you do want them pretty close. Don't, don't turn stuff down. Don't, you can have stuff turned down at the shoulder if you need to. The other ones don't turn stuff down past 0.5. The less you, the smaller you make this value, the more likely your constraints are going to be to fail to solve. The, the, like the cone of angles that they can deal with will just get narrower the smaller these values get. So. Just keep that in mind. One is also like kind of strong. So just, I'm just going to turn that down to 0.8 because one is strong. Eight is also strong, but it's like nicely strong instead of like crazy strong. Let's try seven. Sure, that's close enough to the dotted line in front. So this wolf has like very long anime legs. So that's why these values might be a little bit low, or I don't know. So we want this one looking kind of horizontal. And then turn this up. So you basically, you want this to look kind of like what an animal would do if it started, you know, if it were halfway to lying down. Or look, make it just look, just make it look good. Make it look like it's doing something good. Let's get you, okay, so let's get around to six. Um, I generally turn this up to 0 0.9 and this to 1. I don't know. I just usually do that. Okay. Finalize and save. You have to press this button. Oh, so every time you drag the script on to a completely blank Anytar, it will come in by default with, like, my personal values. But if you drag the script onto an Anytar that has enabled active constraints, it will preserve your values. So it will sort of try to help. However, if you're just, like, getting in here deep in the weeds, tweaking... 
consider taking a screenshot every once in a while. You know, I don't know. Another place you can go to recover your values is in the project animation files if you've pressed this button at least once, but I'm not going to get into that because that was complicated to set up. Uh, so don't, you don't need to touch this. Hardly anyone will need to touch this. It's medium by default, and that's going to be fine for almost everyone. Oops. <laughs> so first, let's get out of the chair pose. Extreme pose, good. Default pose. Okay, now to stepping. Boop, 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 boop. The old way I had this set up, you could also see your hips tilting as you stepped. Uh, you can't see that in the project anymore, but the system itself is more robust. So you'll just get a small amount of appropriate hip wiggle later. You can't see it in here, I'm sorry. So this is like less fun. Uh, forefoot pickup. What you want to do here is follow the instructions. You know, follow the instructions. You know, I'm not going to do it. Just follow the instructions. Any tar wiggler? Okay. That's too much, right? So I put it all the way one direction and it was too much. So you have to turn these down so that they're more reasonable i kind of i kind of keep these the same you don't have to keep these the same they're they're independent of each other to, to some degree the this one influences this one but i you know i don't know just keep them the same or don't but i mean there's a slider right here play with it have fun oh, three was fine no that's fine okay this st stuff um if you put bend the end of bend where it belongs you just don't don't even bother with the apparent length compensation system because it's probably fine i had to do special stuff for like a crazy super long avatar but if that's not you don't worry about it one two three and the apparent length compensation this does not quite look like it, how it will in game there's something it does, does doesn't look like it just doesn't look right in the editor it will be fine in game so this is a quad the system was broken for a really long time and now it's good. Uh, if you want to test that value, expand yourself, go find your head, turn your gizmo on, and just rotate your head to like do something. Then go back, find it again. Where am I? Okay. And you can switch between these and see which one suits your... You don't. If you're a quad, you're not going to want the tar button. Uh, neck swings a lot, head turns a oh, oh, eh. Oh, my buttons are fucked up. Okay, so, okay. You messed up your avatar? Delete it? And go again. Oh, actually, I guess I shouldn't have done that, but I did. These are all fine. Aren't they? I don't know. It was more like... Maybe eight... It's seven. Oh, you, okay. You, because I pressed finalize and save before, I can just leave this stuff alone. As long as I don't press this again, the project animations, which is have already saved your values. So don't worry about it. Just don't press the button again if you know that you have the values that you need in there. All right, this stuff we're not doing. Okay, uh... I'll have to figure out why this button stopped working. That was fine. You can't fly. You don't have wings. We're not folding your wings. This is not your problem. That was it! I guess be careful about touching that button until I fix it. Okay, remove component. Add component. Animator. Again, just, just do as I do. Uh, avatar is going to be... V14 humanoid avatar dot FBX. Doesn't matter whether you check that or not. VR searching, adding component and searching ACH avatar, VRC avatar descriptor. I guess it doesn't have Vizimis yet, whatever. Uh, you will need to customize your viewpoint and your playable layers. Somebody told me that, like, you're not. What? Edit? Hello? Do I not do that? Hello? Okay. Somebody told me that you're supposed to have your viewpoint not out here, but like over your head bone pivot. Okay. That the the viewpoint affects where your hands are gonna be when you're in um 
virtual reality. So I'm kind of used to having my, hello. I'm used to having my viewpoint further out here, uh, but whatever. It, if your viewpoint is further forward, you will lift up. You will kind of lift your feet up when you look down. So it's probably, it is a bit better to have your viewpoint just kind of in line with your head bone. But you could probably split the difference and be fine. All right. So change your, the viewpoint is positioned reasonably. I look, you have to do playable layers. The only thing happening in my base layer is putting you into a little hover mode when you have flight toggled. That's not relevant for this avatar. Okay, so you need action. Advanced action, but what you really need is the FX layer and just do the advanced static one. So the advanced FX blend tree one, that's like, there's a whole bunch of custom poses in here that are all blending together. It's just, that's too much. It's too much work to update all those poses for your avatar. Just do advanced static. It should be named advanced FX static, but it looks like it just says advanced static for now. You need expression menus. So advanced expert menu advanced expert params. There's probably a few parameters in there that you can delete, but probably not that many. Uh, uh, it just work now. But it's not. Oh, duh. Okay. Uh, did we? Yes. This is why it's good to have that uh, enable the Avatars 3.0 emulator when you're making your project with the VR Chat Creator Companion because it's much nicer to do this than to have to upload stuff. So, whoa. That's too much. That's too much. Yowza. That's way too much. So maybe we do have to... Whoa. Oh, it's because it's a new avatar and I didn't change what the... <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. Okay, that's so that's what happens if you just are rocking oops if you're just rocking like the original anytar wiggler settings so you you do want to change those that was too much you can just plop this on even if you have your other stuff on there like your animator and your avatar descriptor it's not gonna you just want to make sure you remove this before you go into play mode because this grabs onto your hips in a way that really screws up the avatar emulator it won't wreck anything it's just not going to work right so make sure you remove this before you go into play mode or I don't know, disable it. And uh, it's not, you, it won't, it won't let you upload the avatar with this stuck to it. So don't worry about that. So let's go to the Wiggler. Okay, fix this. It was about 0.3 before. All right. Reset. You can leave this alone. All right. Remove component. Well, why is it? Did I really not save a scene? That's weird. Yeah, gosh, okay, save your project. And yeah, it's work, you work so fast, you don't even have to save your project. That's better. What have we got? So it's just working now. You know, there you are. Your your default stuff is, I wouldn't bother changing it at this point, especially if you're just trying to work quickly. If you want to talk to me about changing settings, I'm usually up for talking about that, like how to really get in here and tweak different responsivity things. But it should just, it should just already work. Should. Oh, this is a stupid angle. Yeah, avatar pickup and everything and stuff it should all just all just work uh that's it oh it's working man um uh, maybe this needs to be a little wigglier and then i'll go i want to make it a little more wiggly i'm going to make this number a little more negative and this one too and then i'm going to take it off and try it again I don't know why the feet are tipped a little forward, but whatever. You know, like, it's just that looks a little more lively. You do want a little, a little bit of a wiggle in there. 
There you are. And this is a nice for a fluffy foxtail, but if you were some other kind of canine, this is kind of more tuned to be like a cat or a dragon, you know, but right there it is. There you have it. A working initar. If you do exactly what I did, you'll be fine. <laughs>